I've been to China again for the last weeks and I wanted to tell you about my impressions of the current Chinese car industry. When I came to China for the first time nine years ago, Chinese cars were old school combustion engine cars, bad copies of western designs with bad quality and banged up. There was heavy smoke in Beijing and brown toxic dust everywhere. And people drove like crazy. It seemed like people were not very familiar with car traffic, but now they suddenly had lots of cars and we saw crazy unnecessary accidents. Since my wife is Chinese, we have many friends and family in China. Back in the day, they were all driving these old Chinese cars and couldn't afford Western cars. Because Chinese cars were not that reliable, there was always a strong desire for Western cars and also because they had a lot more prestige. For many, their Chinese car was still their first car in their life. And remember that it's very hard to get a license plate in China, so you don't simply buy a second car. So a few years later, you could see that the financial situation for Chinese people was getting better. Also our friends and families. They were buying new cars, Chinese cars and aiming for bigger cars, especially SUVs and minivans. And by the way, also air quality and driving skills got a lot better. Last year, the first visit after Corona, the situation of people was improving even more and they were now buying expensive Western cars. So they have state-of-the-art Western cars like Audi, BMW, Mercedes and Chinese people only buy new cars. So they could afford much more expensive cars now and the number of electric cars increased significantly. This year, the whole market changed once more. Lots of new Chinese brands came up with lots of new cars and most of them are unknown in the Western world. Like I explained often in my videos, it's much simpler to build an electric car and so all these new Chinese EVs pop up. And the summary is, they really build their dreams. They build whatever is cool. The main design is basically always the same. One large battery in the floor with between 60 and 100 kilowatt hours capacity an electric motor at one axle or two for all-wheel drive for faster models. In terms of suspension technology, they all have double wishbone front, multi-link rear and, at larger models, air suspension all around. So they simply copy the best design, make it work and then every model has it. Same for example with door handles. A lot of these Chinese models have the flush Aston Martin handles. And in terms of exterior design, this new generation of cars is shockingly innovative. They design and build things I never thought about before. Like a family van with angled rear window, an SUV coupe with vertical rear window, or lights and screens outside of the car to communicate with its surroundings. These new cars usually have top brands for tires and brakes like Brembo and they like to design them with super low fronts and sharp headlights. These cars can also accelerate from 0 to 100 km per hour in 3 to 5 seconds, some even faster like I discovered during a test drive of the Xiaomi SU7. This particular one gives you 5 years warranty on the car and even 8 years on all drivetrain components. And all that for just around 40,000 euro for the top model. Also, the body quality is good and many models have extended front screens or rear windows like we all know it from Tesla. And now let's talk about the interiors. The interior quality is great, not just at the front like many western models, front and rear. And while many designs in the western world look similar, the interior designs are really fresh and innovative. And of course have large screens. Connectivity and entertainment is the main priority here. Some cars even have game pads inside them. Or they have screens in the back where kids have many games, so if you ask the kids, they love Chinese cars and they find Western cars boring. Another example is the Nomi, the little helper in the Neo dashboard, which can move and people like to individually decorate it. Or the bottle opener at the Dongfeng off-road truck. Minivans and the most comfortable way of traveling has also become a huge priority now. There are many luxury electric six-seater vans now with cooled and heated massage seats in the middle with large screens so everyone can watch their own program. I was traveling 200 kilometers in such a luxury electric taxi from one town to another at 41 degree ambient temperature, enjoying a movie on my ventilated massage seat in the cooled down car. And by the way, in Chinese city traffic you drive at most 80 kilometers per hour, between cities on the highway 120. 
So these cars don't have to be designed for 200 km per hour and more like German cars, they can be designed much cheaper. Zeker is a new fancy brand and they took this luxury minivan topic to the next level and the kids love it. Impressive were also the taxis I took in Beijing and Shanghai. These were always Chinese electric limousines with between 400 and 500 km of range. Large trunk, one electric motor and every time I checked their energy consumption and mileage. They were all around 15 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers, so had 60 to 70 kilowatt hour batteries, and some of them had over 400,000 kilometers on the clock. And their condition was surprisingly good. The interior still looked nice, nothing was broken or fallen off, and the ride was very comfortable with the electric drivetrain. That was very different before in Chinese taxis. So after experiencing all this, I was asking Chinese people why are they still interested in Western cars at all? The Chinese cars look great, the quality seems to be good, they are so much more exciting and innovative, they are much cheaper and they drive well for what you need in China. And to be honest, these cars would be great in the rest of the world as well. And they explained to me that many Chinese customers are still careful with these new brands because some disappear as quickly as they came. And if you have a car which you can only open with a phone app and this company doesn't exist anymore, you have an expensive problem. Also, I experienced at the friend's car during my stay how a ring mirror broke and the power window broke on a Chinese car. So there are still little hiccups like this, but the overall development is impressive. Right now, lots of Chinese still trust the Western car's quality and reliability, but this can change rapidly, as we have seen in recent years. So it seems like the Western car industry has to move a lot faster than what they did so far to be able to keep up with what's coming from China. I hope you liked this little insight and please consider to become a B-Sport Club member for more videos like this. See you at the next one.